This is Derek. He's in his 20s. He's an English professor and an academic advisor at Florida A&M University in Tallahassee. He holds a Master of Science degree from Florida State with an undergrad in psychology. He's a father. He's a husband. He's no doubt the product of the environment in which he was raised. These are his words. This is his story about that place where he grew up and one extraordinary woman. There's a saying that goes, it takes a village to raise a child. And that's true. As a young black male who grew up in Miami, I was presented with challenges. Staying out of trouble and remaining in school were undoubtedly some of the most difficult. In my fifth grade year, after my father had left us and my aunt had passed away, my mom asked my four brothers and me to take in our five cousins so they wouldn't be separated from one another in the foster care system. Of course, we agreed, not thinking about the strain that it would cause. Three years later, in the latter half of my eighth grade year, with my cousin still living with us, we moved to Jupiter. I didn't know anyone. It was a bad time for me. As time passed, I met a friend, Lucy. She told me about the Jupiter Tutorial Center, that you could get help with schoolwork, get some snacks, and go on cool trips. One day later, before I could even tell my mom about the center, Miss Runner pulled up in our front yard. And the rest was history. I grew to love and appreciate everything about the center and this amazing woman. She taught me my attitude had to change. She taught me humility, and that being a smart student on top of it wouldn't hurt anyone. Miss Runner has seen me at my worst, and I can say I would not be who I am today without her. So if anyone asks about how I got where I am today, I say God, my parents, Miss Runner, and the center. Where we are located, there is some very well-to-do families that are nestled up to some families that really struggle. A little bit of the haves and the have-nots all coming together. And the local elementary school just down the street sees that. The students who are coming from the Limestone community to us have a lot of family issues going on. Uh, we have a lot of grandparents raising them, a lot of aunt and uncles, a lot of multi-families. They were born into a situation where, through no fault of their own, they don't get the help at home, don't have the home environment, don't have two parents at home, struggle, and often don't do well in school. Edna Runner had that brilliant uh, notion, and uh, you know, in her heart, she knew it was the right thing to do, is to take children who might otherwise leave school, return to a dark home, these children, when they leave school, can come to this protected environment where a lot of learning can take place. And if we can get them back on track, if we can get them going in the right direction, help them do better in school, help them do better on standardized tests, help them do better with personality issues. We teach them, we work with them, we play sports with them, and we help them have a better shot at a good life. They love to hear you say to them, how was your day? Or on Mondays, you know, what did you do this weekend? And, and just, they love that attention. They need that attention. Without the center, this neighborhood wouldn't be that good. These children, they probably would be more criminal, more thief. With the center, I can say my kids have first class life. Miss Runner is one of the biggest influences in my life. Uh, when I came here to the center, we would all call her Big Mama. She would also get me involved in stuff. Uh, I started piano here, and it was very helpful. Miss Runner has helped me to know which path to take, just to keep my head straight and focused. You've got dozens and dozens of children here, 100 plus, that Edna takes care of. They teach them, they educate them, they love them, they feed them, they clothe them. When Christmas comes around, a lot of these kids don't have much Christmas. 
So they arranged to have lots of presents here for moms and little sisters and grandmothers and dads and brothers. And then the kids come in and they take a bag and they run around and they get a gift for each member of their family. And for a lot of them, that's their Christmas. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see because some of these kids will look at you and say, if I don't get a gift for myself, can I get an extra one for my sister? And that's, that's strong, yeah. We tend to take things for granted, but Edna teaches us not to. And she teaches the kids not to, and she te teaches the kids to appreciate what comes their way. We went to go to Corral as a field trip, and this student took the chicken and just stuffed it in his mouth. And I said, excuse me, sir, what are you doing? And he just kept going, and I said, pick up the fork, eat the chicken with the fork. He said, what is a fork? And you know, that kind of, it baffled me because I'm thinking everybody has forks, spoons, knives, all that good stuff at home. And then I had to take myself out of my shoes, put myself in his shoes and say, okay, maybe he doesn't know what a fork is. So I had to teach him that day how to eat with the fork. And that, that always stuck with me. And these kids are, they pull on your heartstrings. Whoever walks in the door, whether it's a volunteer or it's someone from the school system or it's it's an agency that's coming to make sure we're doing, you know, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. You're here for five minutes and you want to you want to know what you can do to help. I've been involved for three years uh, tutoring. I first started once a week and after a few days they asked me, Mr. Lee, why do you only come once a week? And I didn't really have a good answer, so I started coming twice a week. And then I went on the board uh, shortly thereafter. And in terms of the evolution since then, an important thing that's happened is we bought the neighboring property and are now uh, entering into a fundraising campaign to expand our facilities. We have 107 kids right now with capacity constrained. That's all we're allowed to have with the present physical space. And um, so we want to help more kids. And there are children that are waiting to come here. There's more help that can be done. Getting the tutorial center to where it is today is now truly starting to pay off. We're at a point where we can expand our operations, we can expand our facilities, and we can help more kids. And when you get right down to it, that's what we're here for. So we're gonna to continue to grow and we're gonna to continue to enrich their lives and add value to the community. We are our neighbor's keeper, and I always tell people that if you want a child to succeed, help me to help this child to succeed in many ways is that if you donate to the program, we will make sure your money go to the right and the proper places. We're going to get the next building built. We're going to make that expansion happen. We'll figure out a way. It makes the future a lot brighter for all these children. These kids are special. It's a rough part of town. It's a rough life when you're living in a different world. And if you're in a blessed world, step up, make a difference. It's, it's, it sounds really easy to say. It's actually really easy to do. Spend a little time. Your heart will open up. Believe me, if you have a heart, this is the place you'll find it. If you've forgotten what being good is, you'll see it here. This is the best place in town. This may be the best place I've ever seen. They do good work here.